The last part of this session is by Luca Tswan, and he'll talk about Duster-Martin-Heckman measures for Hamiltonian groupoid actions. Thank you, and thank you for the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk here. Um, yeah, so I'll talk about these, the title. Um, so this Duster-Martin-Heckman measure is something that I guess originally came up in the context of Hamiltonian torus actions. So uh, when you have such a thing uh, under suitable assumptions, which I guess should be a uh, proper moment map or momentum map. No, I'm just going to keep calling them moment maps. Otherwise, I'm going to get in my own head. Uh, with proper moment map, and let's say the action is locally free, um, then uh, this darcy heckman measure, which you get by pushing down the Liouville uh, measure to the to t star is going to be a certain function times the Lebesgue measure there, uh, and this function just gives you the uh, symplectic volume of the reduced space, which is a symplectic orbifold. Um, and then I guess the, the interesting thing is that this this function is a polynomial, uh, which is something that follows from you know the other famous uh, linear variation. Um, and what I would like to do is get a similar result for, for Hamiltonian actions of symplectic groupoids, certain symplectic groupoids. Um, right, so I'll just quickly give the definition of what such an action is. Um, then I guess I'll go into quite some detail on the Darcy Heckman results for PMCTs. So this is. Uh, done by uh, Kranik Fernandez and Martinez Torres, they, in the context of for someone's fold of compact type, they get generalizations of these Darcy Heckman results already. I'll explain that, and then at the end I'll look at some some results. Right. So a symplectic groupoid. This is just a, a Lie groupoid with a multiplicative symplectic form, uh, which I guess are now well known to be kind of global objects associated to Poisson manifolds. So when you have such a thing, you induce a Poisson structure on the base and this group it integrates the cotangent algebra. Um, and then these things, there's a notion of Hamiltonian actions for these, uh, which is as follows. So you just want to act just a Lie groupoid action on a symplectic manifold. Uh, you call it Hamiltonian if you have this multiplicative multiplicativity condition uh, where here a is the action defined on the on this and then and this condition is, is what you want um which might well it doesn't uh, look like sort of the classical Hamiltonian group action definition but uh, there is an infinitesimal version of this which really looks like a moment map condition uh, which is equivalent to this in the source connected case um uh, and so this is a definition that generalizes not only just the classical Hamiltonian group actions, but also other moment map theories, like these group valued moment maps, these quasi-Hamiltonian stuff that came up earlier today. Uh, I don't really know anything about that, so I can't do anything other than mention that, you know, uh, this, this fits into this framework. Uh, what I can do is just quickly explain how uh, this generalizes really Hamiltonian group actions. So if you have a Hamiltonian group action, you can form uh, the action group by with a coadjoint action. Right? This will be a group by over G star. And then this is isomorphic to the cotangent bundle. So there, this has a symplectic form. And then when you do this, this turns into a symplectic group by integrating the linear Poisson structure. Uh, and then since this acts on some symplectic manifold with an equivariant moment map, you can define an action just just acting by the by G. Right? It's just let's say here, uh, and then this will be a Hamiltonian action in in this sense. So this is how this generalizes group actions. Okay, so that's the definition, and what we want is a uh, is Darcy Heckman measures in this context. So let's talk a bit about the, the, the situation for PMCTs now. So 
This stands for Poisson manifold of compact type. So this is a Poisson manifold which has a compactness type in the sense that the global object associated to it has a compactness type. So you want this to be integrated by a source-connected symplectic groupoid which has a certain compactness type. So there's several that you can consider in this talk. I will just restrict to the to what's called source properness. So you want the source and also the target map automatically. You want that to be a proper map. Okay, so that's the situation I will restrict to now. Um, and then in this context for regular PMCTs, uh, you can write down uh, their smart Heckman results. Um, so basically what you have is you have linear variation and you have a polynomial Darstmann Heckman measure. Uh, I guess before you can say that the what allows you to talk about linear variation and such, because of course now your your base is not a, a linear space anymore, right? It's not so straightforward. Uh, but one of the big things about this PMCT is that the leaf space has nice structure. It has the structure of an integral of fine orbifold, and this is what allows you to formulate, you know, what it means to be linear variation or polynomial. Um, so yeah, like I said, there's linear variation with respect to the structure. So here, linear variation means you're looking at the symplectic forms on the leaves, and then as you vary from leaf to leaf, you have a linear variation in cohomology. And then finally, there is a, a polynomial decimal technical measure on the leaf space. So I'll explain this last point uh, in, in some detail now. Um, Right, so we fix a regular source-connected source proper symplectic groupoid. Um, and then the first thing you get is an affine measure on the leaf space, which comes directly from the integral affine structure. So how do you get this? Um, well, this, this integral affine structure comes from just a transverse integral affine structure on, on M, transverse to the symplectic foliation, uh, which in turn is... It's basically a certain lattice in the co-normal bundle, um, which you obtain by essentially taking kernels of exponentials in the isotropy Lie algebras and transporting them over, uh, because the Lie, al Lie algebra, the isotropy Lie algebras are isomorphic to the co-normal spaces. So that gives you a lattice, which turns out to be an integral of phi structure. Um, from this lattice, you get a density on the normal bundle by you can just take you know, any basis of the lattice, essentially, wedge all of them together. This gives you a well-defined density. And then from this density on the normal bundle, you get a measure on the leaf space, which I guess there is, you know, going over some things here. Uh, there is, how I think about this, there's a nice paper by Kreinig and Mestre, which is called Measures on Dif Differentiable Stacks, where they develop this whole framework of essentially transfers measures on the groupoids. This fits into that framework and actually in a very nice way because now we're dealing with proper regular groupoids where the situation becomes really nice and having a density on the normal bundle really gives you a measure, which intuitively makes sense, right? You care about the transverse part. So this gives you a measure. Uh, to actually work with this measure, it's, it's uh, useful to actually work on the level of M, right? This is a manifold and you can actually concretely integrate things. Um, this measure arises on M as this density here, where you essentially you combine this density on the normal bundle with a density with like a leafwise density, which there is an obvious candidate here. You can use the leafwise Liouville -Leaf forms uh, or densities, I should say. All right, so this gives you a measure on M, and then this one will be related to uh, the FM measure by essentially an integration along fibers formula. Um, so if you push forward this measure on M to the leaf space, uh, you just get this F fine measure multiplied by this function, which, right, you're sort of integrating over the fibers, which are your symplectic leaves. That's how you should think about it. Um, so you pick up the symplectic volume of the leaf, uh, but not quite. There is like an integer in front, which is there for technical reasons, I guess, that this picks up the number of connected components of the isotropy groups all over this leaf. Um, and yeah, this is just there. It has to be, you know, 
you can think of this that you know nearby leaves can be covers of each other essentially which will be that that number of, she of sheets uh, so if you don't put that there this is in general not going to be a smooth function now it's a smooth function um, right so this is how you get the affine measure and you should think of this affine measure as the Lebesgue measure from before. Um, this is the role that it plays. In fact, if you do this whole thing in the classical case, you really do just get the Lebesgue measure back. So this is essentially, this is the measure that we will be, what we will be uh, comparing our Dijkstra hegma measure to. Right, so this Dijkstra hegma measure is much easier to define. You just have a Liouville measure on the space of arrows and you just push it down first by the source or the target. And then you push it down towards the, the leaf space. This gives you a measure, which we call the Dijkstra Heckman measure. And then this is one of the main theorems from PMCT2, which says that this measure is equal to the volume squared times the affine measure. And the volume is a. So this is the vol function that I just, de just defined. And this vol function is a polynomial on B. Okay. Um, this fall being a polynomial on B follows from this, I didn't talk about it, the linear variation for PMCTs. There is a result that locally just comes down to the classical case, basically, that tells you this is a polynomial. Um, also, maybe I should clarify, what does it mean to be a polynomial? Uh, it's just that it means that in any integral fine chart, your function is a polynomial. This is a well-defined notion because, of course, integral fine transformations preserve polynomials. So this is something you can see. Um, yeah, so this looks slightly different than, than the classical case because you have this square, which basically comes down from the fact that, as you see here, you are you're essentially integrating over fibers twice, right? First, you go over the source fibers of your groupoid, which will give you this vector vol, and then you push down again to the leaf space, gives you another one. That's why there's a square there. Okay, so this is the, the PMCT setting and the there's some Heckman measure there. So, okay. Let's say, uh, let's now go to actual Hamiltonian actions. So suppose that we have, so let, let's start with a free action because in that case, the situation is very nice and it follows pretty directly from this PMCT setting. Um, right, so I, again, I'm going to assume the groupoid that is acting to be regular source connected and source proper. I'm assuming the moment map is proper and that it has connected fibers. So in this setting, things are very nice because the quotient is, is smooth, right? Because the action is free. And it's actually, again, a regular Poisson manifold, which is again of, of source proper type, right? If you just take the, this gauge construction, uh, so G X diagonally on this fiber product X with itself, take the quotient. This is actually a regular source connected source proper integration of the quotient. Um, and of course, pretty much by definition, this is symplectically Arita equivalent to the group which that the group with that is acting. And actually in this case of a symplectic Marita equivalence, you can say very generally uh, this result. So, Let's say we have two of these nice symplectic groupoids with good properties, and we have a symplectic Marita equivalence between them. Um, I've already identified the leaf spaces. Um, then you can define a Darcy Heckma measure by taking the Liouville measure on X and pushing it down all the way to the leaf space. Um, and what you get then is uh, that this is again. A multiple of the fi measure and this it's basically a mix between the two sides right so vol one is this vol function for the left groupoid and vol two is this vol function for the right groupoid and you pick up a mixed term here okay. and of course this this generalizes kind of this result for pmcts because you can just take any symplectic groupoid acting on itself from the left by left and right translation and then this this decimal hexa measure will be the same one that we had before, and you just get the square here. Uh, and this also generalizes at least classical 
that's my Heckman for in the free case because uh, let's see. change this into a torus. So in the classical case, you will this, and then you have the quotient here. Integrated by this gauge thing. And then um, in this case, uh, this full one is actually just identically one, right? Because symplectic leaves are points here and uh, the isotropy is connected. It's just a torus. And then this full two is going to be the, this. The, the volume of the reduced spaces, right? Because the reduced spaces are exactly the symplectic leaves of this uh, this Poisson manifold. So that's what you get here. And okay, so that's the free case. It all works out very nicely. So if we go to the locally free case, um, stuff gets a little bit more complicated because. Of course, you cannot just play this game where you consider the quotient and do stuff there, because now the quotient is not smooth, uh, in general, not smooth. Um, so it is still a Poisson orbifold. Um, so you, this, this will be an orbifold presented by the, the action groupoid. And there is a Dirac structure here that uh, presents a Poisson structure on the quotient. So. I'm taking here the orbits of the action and I'm combining it with kind of like the graph of omega restricted to the kernel of the mu. Um, so this is what you could call like a basic Dirac structure. So it's intersection with the tangent bundle gives you exactly the orbits, the foliation, or it just gives you the tangent bundle to the foliation uh, and it's pullbacks to the groupoid by source and target coincide. And then, yes, yeah, so I don't know if I should say like is or can be thought of as can be defined as I'm not exactly sure what to put here, but if you think about it a little bit about what happens in the smooth case, you can think of this leaf space of L being the leaf space of your of your Poisson orbifolds. Right? The, leaf, the leaves of this Dirac structure are going to be uh, kind of saturations of the of the mu fibers. And you know that the mu fibers are supposed to kind of give you your, redu your reduced, your, sorry, yeah, the mu fibers are, are supposed to be the leaves of your quotient somehow, right? Um, yeah. Okay, so this, this Dirac manifold actually is also of compact type. So you can take the pullback of G by the moment map, endow it with this, you know, certain presymplectic form, and uh, this is a presymplectic groupoid integrating the Dirac structure. Presymplectic in the sense that you know it has all these nice uh, non-degeneracy conditions and so. Um, so this is a presymplectic groupoid integrating it, um, and this is again source proper and source connected and regular. And actually all these nice results for PMCTs, they also apply in the case of pre-symplectic groupoids actually. So for, Dirac, for DMCTs. So again, this gives you the leaf space of your quotient, which now is not smooth anymore. It still has all these nice properties. So the leaf space is still inherits an integral of fine orbifold structure, which allows you to talk about this affine measure that you get there naturally. And um, so, yeah, so you can also define the, just the decimal hexagon measure. You can define as usual as well. Um, and actually, this group weight is, of course, Marita equivalent to G itself. And, um, but, but this Marita equivalence also preserves the integral fine structure on the, on the orbifold, on the, sorry, on the leaf spaces, right? So 
basically this is my long-winded way of justifying that you can just work on the leaf space of the groupoid that it's acting without any worries right on the in the free case you can do that because it's actually equivalent to the quotient i'm saying that even if the quotient is not smooth you can essentially still do this right um so yeah you can think of kind of in the in the free case you can think of your of your that's my type of measure either in kind of the classical sense that you push it down along the moment map and then to the leaf space you can also think of it as pushing it to the quotient and then to the leaf space there um, which in the free case trivially gives you the same thing in the locally free case also gives you the same thing okay uh yeah so that's then the setup and then in this case you still have this polynomial nature so um yeah this is the result <laughs> vol here is this vol function for the group that is acting and this vol red is the is just the again just like in the classical case you take the symplectic volume of the reduced space together again symplectic orbifold so this is something you can define you still have to put this this normalization factor pretty much there and then you have this result and then you can also still prove that this thing is a polynomial on the leaf space. So also in the locally free case, you get that the Darcy heckman measure will be a polynomial. Uh, wow, I went very fast. Uh, I'm sorry, that's all I have. <laughs> so. Thank you for this very interesting talk. Uh, are there any questions? So in this case, do you know anything about the degree of polynomial? Is that controlled by the difference of dimensions or? Uh, yes, yes. It's just like, the, the, just the like in the classical case, yes. Then uh, how about the like localization result? Like the, is that, do you know so that, anything I mean, about that, it? That's what I'm supposed to be working towards, uh, <laughs> which that will be the next step for sure. Yeah, but thank you. I don't know how that will work because uh, I don't know, I'm trying to follow this, I don't know if you read Darcy Martin Heckman's paper, the next thing they start doing is like they use this Fourier transform trick and they use the polynomial nature. I don't know how that will work on in this general setting, but that's what I want to go into. Uh, very nice talk. Thank you. I want to ask uh, whether if you have some example in mind of this, for instance, a, a Poisson orbifolds that may appear a, in this setting. I'm, I'm asking especially because I see that there are many assumptions and I want right. to understand what kind of situation. Yeah, I, I don't have any, yeah. any new examples yet in this. So this is kind of what I want to, again, to kind of study this localization. So maybe find some simple example here where where Same. I can start. Same. But even the the old example, because you say new example, but old example, what what examples you mean from those from Dusterman and Eker, uh, and Eichmann, this? What are the other examples? The old examples? Uh, I don't know. I don't really have any. <laughs> don't worry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. No, that's mine. Okay. I mean, yeah, of course, you can look at interesting examples in Torah sections, right? Yeah. Are yeah. there uh, additional questions? Doesn't seem so, and I don't see any on Zoom. No, no questions on Zoom. All right. So let's uh, thank Luca again.